Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to do a tutorial on how to color this white daisy. This is the Strathmore toned tan paper that I'm coloring on. It's wonderful paper and I love how my Prismacolors work on this paper. So if you didn't see my previous video, I did a tutorial on how to color the hair. I also did a tutorial for this bird. I'll make sure those are linked up in the cards in the upper right hand corner. If you enjoy videos like this, please do make sure that you subscribe to my channel and turn your bell notifications on so that you always get notified every time I post a new video. And if you like this tutorial, please do make sure that you give this video a thumbs up because it helps my channel out a whole lot and I appreciate it. So let's go ahead and get into this video. This is the page. I actually had two of these. And this is the page that I have been working on, kind of off camera, on camera, a little bit of both. A lot of people that saw my previous video noticed that I had already colored in this daisy and had requested in the comments and as well as in my Facebook group to do it on camera. So I decided to go ahead and make this video for everyone that was asking but I actually have two copies of this one because I used this one on a hair tutorial and I wanted to have it available just in case I wanted to continue to do any more tutorials using this page. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you're going to need is, of course, your white Prismacolor. I'm going to go ahead and zoom you in just a little bit here so that we could see the daisy but we have the white Prismacolor and then I kind of have an assortment of grays so I've got my 10% cool gray they're all cool grays then I've got my 50% cool gray and my 30% cool gray and my 70% cool gray let's go ahead and start coloring in with our white so basically you're just going to come in here and you are going to lay your white down. all the way laid down in all the areas where I want it and this is just one layer I think I went over um, with a second layer on some of the petals so far but I am going to come back with my lightest of grays which is my 10% cool gray and I am just going to come in here and go over some of the areas where I would see the shadows So, like, you should still be, even with your white already laid there, you should still be able to see where the shadows are underneath. And these here were quite a bit darker. So as I come over all the areas where I see the shadows, I'm eventually going to try to cover up all the black lines as I go and just continue to lay more layers. This paper will take quite a few layers, but it doesn't take that many. So I kind of have to be careful about how much pigment I'm laying down so that I don't lay too much down in the beginning. Because by the time I'm done, I do want all the black lines covered. But by doing this, I'm just creating a lot of dimension. So now I'm going to come in with my next gray, which is 30% cool gray. And I am going to try to cover up some of the black lines.
And every time you bring the grays in, what the grays are doing is it just is creating more and more dimension. But you still want to be able to see the separation in the petals. Even though you're getting rid of the lines. And so that's where the grays come in. If you can see, they're really starting to get covered up quite a bit. Just got some more black lines over here. And then here we have like one petal laying over the other petal. So we need to make sure we don't lose that. Okay, so I think we have most of it. And so now I'm gonna come back in with my white and I'm going to try to lay another layer over this to kind of whiten it up even more. And it's also gonna, it's also going to um, kind of pull that gray through. Make sure that your pencil leads are sharpened before you come in and start this. That is very important. Especially your grays. You need to make sure that your gray pencils are very sharpened when doing this. The white one not so much because you're coloring in a bigger area and you know how we all love our white Prisma colors and we don't want to sharpen them away. <laughs> I need to keep as many white Prismas as I possibly can. They're so useful in so many different ways. And they're my absolute favorite burnishing pencil. And now that I've been doing a lot of coloring on this, uh, Strathmore tone tan paper. These white pencils are a must. Okay, I think I have enough of that laid down. So now I'm going to come in with my 50% uh, cool gray and I'm going to create a few more shadows. And I'm going to try, I want you guys to be able to see this. And I know sometimes my hand gets in the way, so I am going to, I'm holding my pencil like this to make sure my hand doesn't get in the way, but also because there's a lot of pigment in this pencil since it is a 50% cool gray. It's got 50% gray in it. And so I don't want to lay down too much because I'm really just trying to create shadows here and not darken it up too much. So as you can see, I'm just kind of coming in where the tips are and where the original lines were to kind of just make sure the separation is still there and that you can still see the image and exactly where it's been placed. And like in these areas where you've got one petal laying behind the other, you want to make sure that you get a little bit more gray in those areas just to create that depth that should be there. Like here where this petal is laying behind. And then here these should be a little bit darker. But if you're holding your pencil like me, it's going to alleviate you being able to put too much pressure down on your pencil.
I'm just trying to add a little bit of texture there. But I know that I want to come back and be able to add more white. So I'm just going very lightly with this one. I just want to make sure up in here that you could see the difference like right in here I'm going to need a little bit more white because I think I have too much gray and now I'm just adding some texture But doing this makes a whole lot of difference. And I'm just going to go around and I'm going to do this to each petal just to create that added little bit of dimension. And this is what you do so that you don't end up creating a object object that uh, looks flat. You don't ever want your objects to look flat. They always need texture. But I don't want to lay down too much gray because I don't want it to look gray. So I think I'm done with that one. I'm probably not even going to use the darkest of grays because I don't think that I want that much gray in there. And now I'm going to come over let me go ahead and sharpen this. Okay, so let's see how many, oh look, it is getting whiter. Let's see how many layers we could get down here. Yeah, this is really whitening it up. And then right in here where I said I needed more white because we want to be able to see that petal laying behind. See how that really just made it stand out? By the time you're done, you don't want to see any bit of the tone tan of the paper showing through. You want to see white. I think I might be at maybe like layer number six now. So the paper doesn't have a lot of tooth, but it has some and it will take enough layers to get the effect that you're trying to get. And you just want to go as much as it takes to get rid of the tone tan color from coming through. So we're going to go ahead and color in the center and I've got my colors picked out and so I've got my yellow ochre and then I have my highlight color which is deco yellow and then this is my very needy brown. <laughs> I don't know how far we're going to get with this one because it I just had to basically use my sharpener and save the lead and it's literally like this small so I had to stick it in a pencil extender. So we'll see how far we could get with that. <laughs> okay so I'm going to come in with my lightest color first which is my deco yellow and I'm just going to do again I'm holding my pencil by the side just like this because I don't want to start laying down too much pigment and like I said earlier eventually we are just going to be able to color or cover all of the um, black lines that are in the paper. Now I'm coming in with my yellow ochre and we are going to do this side and I think these color choices are very similar to what is in the hair although the hair was done with um, Arteza pencils, so I'm kind of mixing pencils here. 
But see, we've got our shading here, and then we've got our highlight here on the outside. And now we are going to use our brown for our shadows. So the shadows would be all in here, where you can see that they are already placed from the actual lines in the paper. Okay, I don't want to lay too much brown. I'm going to come back in with my yellow ochre and I'm going to pull some of that through or just kind of go over it on the top area here and then kind of blend it in down here on the bottom area. And then I'm going to come back with my Deco Yellow and I am going to apply another layer of my highlight here. I'm just coming back in the center, adding a little bit more definition in these areas with my shadowing color. And now I'm going to come over with my highlight and I'm going to kind of blend this center area through. And then I'm going to go over this outside area as well to kind of lighten it up a little bit. And I think our flower is done. And I love it. I love how the white Prisma colors and the brighter colors, and you guys know I'm all about my highlights, but I love how they show up on this tone tan paper. Here is our final product. We are now done with our flower. And I think that our daisy looks absolutely beautiful. I hope that you're able to try this. I will have everything linked down in the description below and the coloring book that this came from. All I did was take my coloring book and scan the image in and then print the image out on this tone tan paper. I don't know if you saw my previous video, but you will have to cut this paper down because it comes in 9 by 12 so you have to cut it with a paper cutter to be able to fit it through your printer. And I do that often when I'm coloring grayscale and I want to print it out on the tone tan paper. So if you all enjoyed this video, please do make sure that you subscribe to my channel and also turn your bell notifications on so you're always notified every time I post a new video. And if you enjoy this video, please do give it a thumbs up because it really helps my channel out. I'm now also on Patreon if you would like to come join us over there. I really appreciate all your support and I hope you all have a fantastic day. Happy coloring. Bye.